As you watch this teaching, I want to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. This is Rick Renner, and I want to say thank you for letting me come right into your space. Today, we're going to continue looking at the healing ministry of Jesus, and we're really going to focus on the methods that Jesus used when he healed the sick, and it's going to be good, and I believe it's going to help you know how to pray for people so that you will see greater results of healing. Say amen. But I'm offering you a brand new series. Hey, this series was really something produced in my life by me really seeking the mind of God about how to have more results when we prayed for the sick. And that's why I want you to have it. And the series is called How to Heal the Sick. It's practical. It's easy. It will really help you. It's five parts, and it comes with a study guide. And in this particular series, there's a lot of Greek words that you need to understand that are embedded in the Greek New Testament, and all of it is in this study guide. So please order these by going online or by giving us a call. And I'm happy to also offer to you two wonderful books. One is called Bodily Healing and the Atonement. I'm always thrilled to offer this book because it so radically affected me many, many years ago. It just proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that when Jesus died on the cross, he not only took our sin, but he also took our sickness. And Pastor Bob Yandian's book that I wrote the foreword for, which is called The Grace of Healing, Revealing God's Heart to Heal. This book is so liberating on the subject of healing that I laughed out loud as I read this book, and I know it's going to minister to you as well. And as I always tell you, when you become a partner with our ministry, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying, welcome to the partner family. Now you might say, Brother Rick, why do you always talk about this? Because our ability to minister to others is connected to our partners. It's our partners that put the fuel in the tank financially so we can do this. I can sit in this chair and teach, but my friends, it takes finances to take this teaching on television and media around the world, and our partners are the ones who are really making it happen. And thank you, partners. And if this program has been a blessing to you, would you please cause it to be a blessing to somebody else by becoming a partner? And the moment you become a partner by going online or by giving us a call, we'll send you my book, which is called Life in the Combat Zone. I really like this book, and it's dedicated to partners. The subtitle says, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. And we will send you Denise's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. And please... If you need prayer, reach out to us. We're waiting to pray for you right now or send us your email. And when it shows up in our inbox, we're going to release our faith. And Jesus is going to do something mighty for you. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Yesterday, I told you that many, many years ago in 1985, when Denise and I packed up our kids and our belongings and we got into a little car and we began to travel across the United States when we were just starting our teaching ministry, we were laying hands on the sick and sometimes we saw glorious things take place and other times we were very disappointed. And I wanted to know why sometimes we saw results and other times we did not. And I said to Denise, Denise, I'm going to go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm going to study every time Jesus healed the sick to find out what I can learn that no one has ever taught me about the healing ministry of Jesus. And I discovered that Jesus particularly used one method to heal the sick. Now, there are various words for the word healing in the New Testament. For example, there's the Greek word eaomai. I mentioned this to you yesterday. It describes a progressive kind of healing. You pray for someone, and from that moment forward, they begin to get better or they begin to amend, but it's not instantaneous. 
Then there's the second word, which was used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. And it is the most often word used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. And it is the Greek word therapeo. It's where we get the word therapy. It describes a kind of healing that requires corresponding actions. And that is primarily the way that Jesus healed the sick. This was quite a discovery for me, and it really showed me and Denise what we needed to do if we wanted to see more healing manifestations. But today I want you to reach for your Bible, and we're going to return to our anchor verse for this series. And as you turn to Hebrews chapter 13, chapter 13 I want you to say out loud, today I'm going to get something brand new from the Word of God. Do you really believe that? Don't just say it, declare it. Today, I'm really going to get something brand new from the Word of God, and me too. But let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 8, our anchor verse, which says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means Jesus is the same. What He did yesterday is what He is still doing today. It's what he's still going to be doing tomorrow. He's not a different Jesus today than he used to be. His character, his compassion, his actions are the same. If he healed then, he's still healing now. If he used one particular method then, he's still using the same method now. And that's what we're going to be seeing today. And we're going to go back to the same verse that we started with yesterday in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Then we're going to move on to Mark and on to the gospel of Luke. But let's go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. This verse is so foundational. I want to cover it one more time, and then we're going to move to the gospel of Mark. But in Matthew 4, verse 23, the Bible says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Okay, here's the method which Jesus used. The Greek word therapeo, which is where we get the word therapy. And you could literally translate this verse and therapy all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And it depicts a healing touch that requires corresponding actions. And this tells us emphatically, Jesus was not in a hurry when he prayed for the sick. His meetings lasted for hours and hours and hours and hours, and he dealt with every person as if they were the only person that was there. And if he prayed for a person that had a withered hand, he didn't just pray and move on. He said, now let's do something with that hand. He therapied them, the Greek word therapeo. He required them to give some kind of a corresponding action. Now use your faith. You try to use that hand, stretch forth your hand. Well, how is a person with a withered hand going to stretch forth his hand? But Jesus therapied them. He released the power, but the person receiving the touch had to do something. And as the person exercised his will to use that hand, bam, the power came into manifestation. You see examples of this all over the four Gospels. And tomorrow, I'm going to be giving you examples of the word therapy in the four Gospels. But that's what Jesus was doing touching people, speaking to people, praying for people, therapying them as he stopped and said, now let's use that hand. Now lift that leg, cover that eye and see what you can see. Cover that ear and see what you can hear. Jesus was requiring them to do something. He was therapying them. And likewise, if you'll stop when you pray for people and then tell them to do what they couldn't have previously done, you will see more manifestations than you've been seeing. That's the way Jesus did it. And he taught his disciples and us to do the same. And this verse says he was healing all manner of sickness. We saw yesterday that this word sickness is the Greek word nosos, which describes a terminal condition for which there's no natural cure, a sickness that is the result of evil spirits, or we could say these were spirit inflicted diseases and no sauce, this particular category of sickness was deemed the worst and the most severe of all sicknesses. These were incurable, but they were not incurable for Jesus. And it goes on to say in all manner of disease. Well, yesterday I pointed out that there's a difference between sickness and disease in this verse. The word sickness is the word no sauce, but the word disease is the word malachion. They don't even sound the same. Malachion describes a condition that is crippling or debilitating, something that has affected your nerves 
or your muscles, you can live, but you can't walk, you can't function. It's a crippling or a debilitating kind of disease. And Jesus healed this among all the people. Then verse 24 says, and his fame went throughout all of Syria. I told you yesterday that the word fame is the Greek word echoe, which is the Greek word for the ear. It describes ears buzzing with information. It can be translated as rumors or stories. The stories of Jesus' healing power was filling people's ears. Their ears were buzzing with information. And what were they hearing? They were hearing that he was healing the sick. And as a result, verse 24 says, And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases. This word diseases is different. This is the Greek word as. Thenea. It is a general word for disease, which is all encompassing every kind of imaginable and even non-imaginable disease would fit into this word asthenia, which means Jesus healed everything. It didn't matter what it was, whether it was known, whether it was unknown, it all was healable by Jesus. And he also healed them that were taken with torments. This word torments would be better translated oppressing torments, and it picks one that is tormented in his mind or in his emotions, which means Jesus has healing power for those that are mentally or emotionally tormented, and those which were possessed with devils. Now, that's the phrase that is used repeatedly in the King James Version, but the Greek doesn't really use that phrase. It uses a Greek word which describes people that are demonized in some area of their life. They are somehow ill-affected by demon spirits. To be demon-possessed would imply they're completely possessed. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about people that were demonized in some area, and Jesus recognized it, and Jesus set them free, and those that were lunatic you know, when I was a boy, sometimes my son would say, son, you are, my dad would say, son, would you please not be a lunatic? <laughs> he shouldn't have said that, but he used to say that. And I used to wonder, what in the world does it mean to be a lunatic? Well, it's from a Greek word, which means moonstruck. And it's primarily used to describe an event that happens during the full moon and would be associated with occult activity. And in Israel, there were people that played with the occult. And now we find those that had dabbled in the occult became sick as a result, but Jesus set them free. And it goes on to say, and those that had the palsy, the Greek word paralutikos, it really describes those that are paralyzed. And what did Jesus do with all of these folks? He healed them. There's that word healed again. And guess what? It is again the Greek word therapeo. You could translate it, he therapied them. Jesus took time with these people. If the person was paralyzed, Jesus spoke a word. He released the anointing and said, now do something. Get up, pick up that bed. How is a paralyzed person going to pick up a bed? But they had to do something to put forth their faith. And as they worked with Jesus, Jesus worked with them and bam, the power of God manifested and they ended up walking. But when we come to Matthew 4, verse 25, it says, And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. But now let's go to the Gospel of Mark. And when we come to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 32, the Bible says, And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him... This word brought is the word pharaoh, which means to physically carry like you would carry a piece of furniture or carry a box or carry something that is heavy. These were invalids, so sick, they could not physically walk to where Jesus was. But their friends or their family loved them so much, they physically picked them up and literally carried them unto him. And the Bible says, all that were diseased and them which were possessed with devils. And notice it says all. The word all in Greek is the word pantas. It means absolutely all, which means there is nothing that would not respond to Jesus' authority. And the Bible says all them that were diseased. And here this word disease is the Greek phrase echo kakos. The word echo means I have. The word kakos describes something really bad or something really foul. 
When you put the phrase together, echokakos means those who had something really bad, those who had something really foul. These were miserably afflicted people, extremely sick. It could even depict people that were in the last stage of a condition. And them that were possessed with devils, which again describes those that were demonized. Verse 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door, verse 34, and he did what? He healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils. But notice at the very first of verse 34, it says, and he healed. And guess what? Here we have it again, the Greek word therapeo. Do you see how often this word shows up over and over and over and over and over, which means Jesus took time. Now, in the early years, I began to learn that we saw disappointing results when we just quickly moved through a prayer line. But if we would stop and would work with every person based on what we were learning from the healing ministry of Jesus and would say, now, use that hand. Try to stretch forth your hand. Lift your arm if you couldn't lift your arm. If you couldn't use that leg, use that leg. If you couldn't bend, bend over, asking them to do something, to give some kind of a corresponding action, usually we would see the power of God begin to work, and they would walk away from that prayer line completely liberated and healed. That is a, the Greek word therapeo. He therapied them. We learned from the example of Jesus that if we would take time to work with people, we would see more results. And that's what Jesus did. He therapied many. That is a literal translation. And the big mistake we've all made is by just speaking to people or laying hands on people and walking away without asking them to do something. This was the method that Jesus primarily used. He asked them to do something they previously could not do. He therapied them. He released the power, but required them to do something. And the Bible says, many. The word many is a form of the Greek word polos, which means many, vast, vast multitudes. But according to the usage of the word healed, the Greek word therapy, it didn't mean how big the crowd was. Jesus did not get in a hurry. He took time with every individual until the power took root. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases. The word sick, the Greek word kakus, it really describes sick in a bad way in a foul way, possibly even affected by demonic activity, and of divers' diseases. The word divers, again, the Greek word poikilos, and this is so very important because this word poikilos describes something that is assorted, divers, various, and as I told you yesterday, it is the same word used in the Old Testament Greek Septuagint to describe Joseph's coat of many colors. These were sicknesses and diseases of all shades, all colors, but it didn't matter. It all responded to Jesus' authority and to Jesus' touch. And Mark 1.34 says he cast out many devils. The word cast out is the Greek word ek balo. It's a compound of two words, the word ek, which means out, where you get the word exit. The word balo means to throw, like you would throw a ball, but when you compound the two words together, cast out literally means to throw out, to cast out, or to evict, which again means Jesus did not get in a hurry. He stood in front of that person and said, I'm not leaving until I evict this demonic influence. And Jesus stuck with that person until they were set free, and he cast out many devils. Now today, people don't talk much about devils. But if you look at the healing ministry of Jesus, Jesus cast out a lot of devils. The word devils, the Greek word daimonion. Now listen to what I'm going to read to you from my notes. This word devils, the Greek word daimonion, really depicts evil spirits, demons, or devils. The ancient world generally believed demons thickly populated the lower regions of the air and that these spirits were the primary cause of disasters and suffering in the earth. This word could be used to depict a person who was insane. And in both secular and New Testament writings, it depicted those possessed with evil spirits and who suffered spirit-inflicted mental or physical infirmities. But when you come to Mark chapter 1, verse 39, it says, And he preached in their synagogues and throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. The Greek literally means he evicted them. Then when you come to Luke chapter 4, verse 40, guess what? 
It says, and when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him and he laid his hands on every one of them. Every one of them in Greek is the word hekestos. Every single one of them without exception. It didn't matter how big the crowd was. Jesus took time to lay his hands on every single one of them. He was not in a hurry. And that is confirmed when the verse goes on to say, and healed them. And the word healed, again, the Greek word, therapeo. He took time to stick with those people until they walked away healed. Now, maybe you've just prayed for people and quickly moved on. Well, sometimes it works. Most often it doesn't. They need your help. They need your help. You need to say to them, lift that arm, bend that leg, bend over if you couldn't have bent over, do something. Ask them to do something. That is the primary method Jesus used when he healed the sick. You see it over and over and over in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He therapied them. That is literally the word that is used. Just as a therapist can't do all the work by himself, the person receiving therapy has to cooperate. And likewise, if you'll use your authority, release the anointing, and ask them to do something, you will see more victorious prayers for those that are sick. I promise you this, based on the Word of God, and we have borne this out as a testimony in our own ministry. My friends, you really can heal the sick if you'll do it the way that Jesus did it. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Have you desired to lay your hands on the sick and see them be healed? Have you tried to do it but felt disappointed with the results? If that describes you, then we have good news. Many years ago, Rick and Denise Renner felt the same way. So Rick dove into the gospel to discover how Jesus healed the sick. From that time on, the Renners have seen multitudes of people healed. And now Rick is sharing what they learned in this valuable series, How to Heal the Sick. In this five-part series, you'll learn the types of sicknesses Jesus healed, the methods Jesus used to heal the sick, the use of therapy in the healing ministry of Jesus. Healing belongs to anyone who believes. Healing is in your hands. If you're ready to heal the sick like Jesus did, as he commands us to do, then you need this series. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. We're also offering you the books, Bodily Healing and the Atonement by Dr. T.J. McCrossan and The Grace of Healing by Bob Yandian. Both books are powerful tools to set you on a strong foundation for seeing healing in your life and in the lives of others. You can order Bodily Healing and the Atonement for only $10 and the Grace of Healing for only $13. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, How to Heal the Sick, and the books, Bodily Healing and the Atonement and the Grace of Healing. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I'm happy to be coming to you from the Tulsa headquarters of our ministry. And this is the room where they do production. And just recently they expanded this room because we're sending resources to the ends of the earth. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about books. You know, I've written a lot of books and things like this. Here is a USB of how to float on the sea of destruction in the last days. We produce that right here or the audio series of the same series. A lot of people want it in video. I really like the video because we show a lot of interesting things on the programs. But in addition to this, we also do the study guides. And you know, I love my study guides because I put a lot of work into these study guides. It's nearly like writing an entire book for every series that we do. And boy, this is a good one. If you don't have this series, you need to order it. But the reason I'm telling you this is because all of this is produced right here in this room in our Tulsa facility. You know, several years ago, when we started our ministry expansion project, it was quite large, but we have already reduced half of that debt. That is amazing. And we've been able to do it because of you. And I wanna say thank you for everything you've given us to help us reduce this debt. It's really not for us. It's so we can liberate this debt and then begin to use all of our resources to take this teaching and these materials 
to the ends of the earth, and that includes a lot of materials that we give. We sow a lot of our material because there are many people who cannot afford to pay, and we want them to have the teaching of the Word of God that they can trust. And if you're not a part of our giving team already, please pray about being a part of our giving team to reduce the debt in the ministry expansion project so we can move on and take the light of the gospel further to the ends of the earth. Today we have covered a lot of material and we're just getting started. When we come back tomorrow, I'm going to give you some concrete examples of the word therapeo, the word therapy, which is used in the Gospels to describe how Jesus healed the sick. But I really want you to order the entire series. It will help you. It will equip you to go out and heal the sick. And the series is called How to Heal the Sick. It's five parts. It comes in all kinds of formats with a study guide that has all the Greek words that I'm sharing in this series. And we're offering you two books, one that really helped me. It's called Bodily Healing and the Atonement. You need this book. And we're also offering you Pastor Bob Yandian's book, which is called The Grace of Healing, Revealing God's Heart to Heal. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed. He's still in the healing business. And we need to understand that God's heart is still to heal. So order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please, 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 please let us know how to pray for you. We really want to pray for you. There's a miracle with your name on it waiting for you. And we will agree with you in prayer for that miracle to be released and to come to your address right where you are. But Father, we thank you for the healing ministry of Jesus. And you've told us that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So Lord, we're going to obey you. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to confirm the word with signs following. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.